So I just arrived in Luxembourg, which is the richest country on earth. So in the next 24 hours, I'm going to try to explore this tiny country, which is in the middle of uh, Germany, France and Belgium. Or at least going to try to explore the capital of this country, which is also called Luxembourg. This video is sponsored by Tap Tap Send, a money transferring app for non-resident Bangladeshis. More on this later in the video. So basically, I took a bus here today from uh, Freiburg in Germany, which went through Strasbourg in France, then back into Germany, and then to here, and took like total five hours. And right now, I'm gonna try to take a bus again to my accommodation. But one of the most interesting things that I read, at least, about Luxembourg is that all of public transportation is free. Like, they have so much money in this country that the taxes just pay for transportation for anyone in this country, regardless of whether you're a citizen of Luxembourg or not. So I just got off the Mercedes-Benz bus and it was like an interesting concept because uh, the front of the bus where people usually get on and pay with their card or cash or whatever, that side was completely like closed off. So people just get on the back, uh, sit wherever they want and then get off when they need to. I've been to cities like Los Angeles and Belgrade where a lot of people just don't pay for the bus and somehow that's okay. But this is the first place I've ever been to or even heard of where it's completely legal to um, not have to pay for all for any buses or public transport. So I'll talk later in the video about how and why this is the richest country on earth. But first I'm gonna to try to get to my accommodation. The price of gas is 1.6 euro per liter. Not too bad. I was craving ice cream the whole day so I had to get some Cornetto for 2 euros 35 cents which is not too bad. Okay, so I arrived at my guest house, which was literally the cheapest accommodation I could find in this entire city. And it costs like $100 for one night. And for that, I get this actually nice looking room, which is like pretty nice, I'm not gonna complain. But it doesn't come with its own bathroom, so there's a shared bathroom down the hallway. And there's no reception, like a hotel for check-in or something. So I had to come in and basically use this little like a key box like you have in some Airbnbs, get the key, come inside, find my room, and get inside here. And I think that's all the assistance I'm gonna get. But this is, I guess, what you gotta pay for the cheapest uh, accommodation in the richest country on earth. There is another village or town that was like an hour away that had a hostel, but I didn't wanna get, get that far away from the center, so I just stayed here. The room's actually pretty nice, and they gave me these candies. Um, with the towels. There's also like a lot of candies and uh, Coca-Cola and stuff outside, which I'm not sure if I'm allowed to use or not. Maybe I can use the coffee at least. Also, in order to save money in Luxembourg, I brought a couple of sandwiches from the supermarket in Germany for two euros each. I went out last night, but it was dark, so I didn't film much. Just saw a bit of the city. Tonight, I'm gonna explore, or today, I'm gonna explore with the camera itself. And I'm in the suburbs of the city today, I think. But even in here, there's like a lot of pretty, um, Different color houses, I guess. So I'm gonna go to the first viewpoint of the city. But before that, let me tell you about the history of Luxembourg and why it's a country and why it is what it is. So the roots of this country go back almost a thousand years to like the 10th century. And uh, the modern borders of Luxembourg were defined in 1839. Its history has often been very closely connected to the history of its larger neighbors, mainly of Germany, because it's such a small state. It was actually one of the founding countries, one of the six founding countries of the European Union. Luxembourg City is one of the four main seats of the EU, along with uh, Brussels, of course, Frankfurt, and Strasbourg. And uh, historically, Luxembourg was important because of its steel manufacturing, but that industry came to a decline and then it diversified its interests and it became sort of like a very important banking center which is also helped by the fact that it's so strategically located in the middle of Western Europe. It had the reputation for the longest time and still does to some extent of being a bit of a tax haven for EU companies so a lot of companies set up their offices right here basically. And banking is the reason why this country is uh, such an important country despite having such a small population of like 600,000 people and having an area like 130 times smaller than its neighboring Germany. And that's why it's so rich because it has the highest GDP per capita of any country in the world according to the IMF. The important thing about Luxembourg is that there's three official languages, German, French and Luxembourgish, which I haven't heard yet, but when I went out yesterday, all I heard was French, basically, <laughs> at least from the people in the service industry. As you can probably tell from my surroundings, Luxembourg is a very, very green country, and there's some actually pretty hikes you can go to up in nature, but I don't have time for that, because I'm gonna have to head out in the evening today. The sun is finally out of the clouds. 
after like almost a full day of being here. And remember, this is supposed to be the summer. This is July, but that's what happens when you're too close to uh, Belgium or the Netherlands. I am at the city's famous bridge, or at least the base of it. Now I'm gonna try to get to the top somehow. Finally on top of the famous stone bridge of the city called Pont Adolf, if I'm pronouncing it right. And this is like a hundred years old and it's a pretty nice place to visit because you can get like a nice view of the surroundings and everything else and also see trains and buses and people walking on the bridge. And if you don't feel like getting on top of the bridge, there's also like this really pretty uh, walkway underneath the bridge where you can go via walking or by bicycles. No trams or buses there. Okay, so now I'm gonna walk into the city of Luxembourg, a city of 130,000 people, which is almost exactly a fifth of the total population of the country. And a fun fact about the city is that 70% of the people living in this city are not citizens of Luxembourg, they're foreigners. And that's definitely the vibe I got yesterday when I was walking around the city at night. At least in terms of like, you know, ethnicity, it seemed to be a very uh, diverse city. So now I'm going deep into the city of Luxembourg, to the heart of the old city. So I basically went out and got some cash from the ATM, which was in euros. By the way, if you're facing hassles in sending money to Bangladesh from abroad, you should really check out this app called TapTapSend. TapTapSend is a very simple app using which you can send money from the US, UK, Canada, Europe, and UAE to Bangladesh. There's a lot of good reasons for using TapTapSend. First of all, there's zero transaction fees no matter how big of an amount you send. Secondly, the rates are also very competitive compared to competitors. The transfer times are also really fast, and you can transfer your money to a bank account or to a Bcash or a Nogot account. And if you're sending money to Bragg Bank, you can also send money via PIN. Finally, TapTapSend has offered my viewers a special promo code, OTG, and if you use that, you get 10 credits for your first transaction. So that's $10 from the US, 10 Canadian dollars from Canada, 10 pounds if you're sending money from the UK, 10 euros if you're sending money from Europe, and 10 dirhams if you're sending money from the UAE. So make sure you check out that app if you need to send money from abroad to Bangladesh. So it seems like the entire city center is blocked off to cars, which makes it a really pleasant area to walk around in. Got some really nice architecture too all around you. So like every other European city center, I found a Turkish food place and also found a McDonald's and a Burger King too. So I'm at this place that's like a bit of a central square with a lot of restaurants with uh, outdoor seating, which just seems to be a great place to be in the summer. So I'm in the square called Place Julian II, which seems to have been turned into this like open market for the day. But there's like lots of fresh produce, lots of fruits, uh, baked goods, saw a lot of wine, and a lot of dogs. Very curious about each other. So just checked out a restaurant nearby, and everything on the menu was like somewhere between 15 to 25 euros. So I'm probably not gonna eat there, but I am craving some coffee though. So let's see what we can find. Oops, sorry. <laughs> There's all these interesting passages in the city going from like one area to the other, which is pretty cool, I think. So I was just at this market or supermarket in the center of the city, which is supposed to be cheap. And you know the sandwiches that I bought from um, Germany in Freiburg, which is not even a cheap city in Germany, which are like two euros there. The exact same sandwiches here were like five euros and 80 cents. That just tells you how expensive this is. I did find myself a cappuccino, a tiny cappuccino. Came with this like bit of chocolate on top. So I'm gonna try that out now. I'm gonna try to mix the chocolate. Um, this is not the kind of chocolate to mix. It's more like a wafer. This is so hot. I'm afraid of like sipping it literally. God damn, it's hot. Not bad though. 
By the way, in that supermarket, I saw at least like 20 different customer client interactions and every single one was in French and that's I think almost the only language I've heard today in the city center so that definitely seems to be the dominant language more than um, German at least in the city center. As expected from the city center of a very rich city you see some fancy shops like Louis Vuitton. So this building behind me is the Grand Ducal Palace or the palace of the Duke of Luxembourg who is sort of this like monarch that doesn't have a lot of like constitutional authority over the constitution of Luxembourg anymore. Apparently it used to be kind of important and he could veto laws and he vetoed this one law regarding euthanasia like back in 2008 and everyone was pissed and then they stripped him of his veto power so now it's definitely more of a ceremonial role. So I see a flag of Ukraine behind me here but I think this is more of like a symbol of support. I don't think Ukraine has anything to do with controlling what happens in Luxembourg. So it seems like no matter where you walk in the old town there's just like a lot of pretty buildings and pretty architecture pretty much everywhere. Right now I'm next to this bar where I had like a pint yesterday for seven and a half euros which I thought would be the cheapest local pint but I went to another bar later like a pizza place and they had a four euro pint. I guess right now I'm in this place called Bokrok which is like a three minute walk from the old town buildings we're at like a few minutes ago and uh, this has been a very significant place historically because it's like these huge cliffs that are sort of sticking out of the valley so it's very important as a location for like uh, military fortifications for like the last thousand years and now it's a great place for you to come and see a view of the valleys and the other bridges and uh, just the buildings down below really cool viewpoint there are actually a lot of tunnels that go underneath these fortifications or the structure that served also a very important military value in the past and was also used and were also used as bomb shelters during World War II. It's interesting, while I was filming here, this little like train-like vehicle with a bunch of carts just pulled up with a bunch of tourists. Okay, so I am pretty hungry and I know the food's gonna be kind of expensive, but I am ready to eat something finally in the old town. So I'm at this ramen place, which is basically not very um, Luxembourgish traditional, but it looked delicious and I had to eat something because I'm starving right now. I haven't really had anything since breakfast, which is like six hours ago. So this looks like a very um, French-Asian fusion kind of place with a lot of ramen options. I ended up going out with this option, which is basically like um, a vegetarian special ramen of the day. It has a lot of different things like mushroom sauce, corn, carrots, cucumbers, lots of other veggies. And the lady came here and told me to like mix it all up, so that's what I'm gonna do first. Like every other restaurant, people here were also speaking French, so that was not surprising at all. But there are some workers here who definitely look like um, they're from like some other country, I don't know, somewhere in East Asia. And this thing costs like 15 and a half euros, which is cheaper than anything else on the menu it seems, which is fine with me because it still looks delicious. Okay, time to mix it up. I like this kind of food where you kind of have to like prepare it yourself first before you like, you know, eat it all. I don't know what this is. I think I'm ready to try it out a little bit. I've done my best at mixing it up, but I think it still needs some work, so I'm gonna use this spoon to have the vegetables while I eat this. Really nice, really fresh. Clearly I needed some training on how to eat this before I started eating this. I apologize to anyone that I love ramen because of the way I'm eating it. I will learn to do it better someday. Mm. These vegetables are so nice. Food's a little oily, greasy, but not too much. And now I'm doing this part, right? I think I've managed to finish all of it. Okay, so that was delicious. And they ended up charging me like 15 euros for that, which is more than what I would have ever paid for a meal if I wasn't filming this, because I'm hoping the video ad revenue is gonna pay for that meal. So click on all the ads or whatever you need to do. But I think that's gonna be the end of my adventures in Luxembourg. 
because I have to go back to my um, guest house, pick up my stuff, get to the bus station, then go to Belgium to meet one of my really close friends that I've been seeing every year, like for the last three or four years. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, do like it. If you want to watch more videos like this from anywhere else, feel free to subscribe. And if you want real-time travel updates, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Nandir on the go. I'll catch you guys in the next video from I'm not really sure where. Let's see.